Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Donny Chain Gang. We're back. We're here. And for a change, we're in Watopia. It's been a great weekend. It's been a nice evening. I've even been out on my bike about four days in a row. What's going on? I know. It's due to rain. Guarantee it now. We are going to scoot straight across today. Try and get hold of Russ, first of all. And this is totally unscripted, totally unrehearsed, because uh, Russ and I have been in very limited communication. So hopefully Russ is listening in on the live stream for the Donny Chain Gang. So let's see, first of all, if we can get hold of Mr. Downing, you'll soon find out. The magic of technology may well work. Let's see if Russ is on the end of a phone line. We've got Brian Smith joining us. Hey, hey up, Russ. Good to uh, see you. How are you doing? I'm all right, mate. Um, just got uh, a little picture up on screen of you climbing up a volcano in some sky kit, oddly enough. Sounds like good fun. Uh, yeah, you, you've got left everybody in the distance, including the team car, I think. We did try and, like, you know, make it relevant, but today um, we're going off up the side of a volcano. What, what's brought this on? I thought you'd hated Watopia. I just, uh, you know, thought, why not uh, make something of a change? Say banging around the streets. I think I watched something the other day and it triggered me. It's not a bad little climb, is it, you know? No, it's pretty good, isn't it? And uh, you've got to say, if you're going to have a fantasy world, you might as well put a volcano in it, let's face it. Everybody wants one of them after watching it in Bond. Like you say, I'm probably scarred after doing two, uh, two ascents of uh, Mount Etna in the Giro, but that's, uh, that's a different story. Yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. And uh, slightly lower numbers tonight. God, it's a fantastic evening, we're into summer, but... It's going to make it very interesting. We should be able to cover everybody, hopefully, and uh, everybody find a group with a bit of luck. Yeah, uh, hopefully, uh, like I say, I think when we don't get so many fast guys on there, we can control it and have a, have a really uh, controlled workout. And uh, like I say, when we get the young cats on, they all like to rip it up. But hopefully tonight we can, uh, we can look after some of the old timers. See, we've got Brian Smith on here. We've got <laughs> Martin Bolt, you know, all the old boys and I'll just slot in the middle of those guys somewhere. Well, we'll we'll soon find out when we once we go hit the climb. And of course it's been a great week for people who've been on the Donny Chain Gang with the uh, rise of people like Mr Laverick on the uh, Tour de France, on the virtual Tour de France uh, stages on the Attack to Tour. It's it, there's been some great performances, hasn't there? Yeah, it's it's uh it's, it's really uh, Give people something to focus on and uh, dig deep. So I say even I uh, we got fifth on the Champs Elysees the other day, and uh, yeah, never even rode the thing. <laughs> well, you know, even you can live out your dreams for us on uh, on uh, Swift, can't you? Uh, I'm still waiting to go there. It will happen yet, yeah, honest, Gov. Um, we're going to let you go because I know time is ticking along. You're going to have to do a little bit of a briefing online. Um, good luck, mate. We may well uh, just see how you're getting, and we'll see if you're in the middle or up at the front. Right, mate. We'll see if we can uh, get a call later on, see if I'm uh, breathing a little bit heavier or whatever. And, uh, yeah, I'll yeah. move on, mate. Sounds good. And you, speak soon. Cheers, Russ. Yeah, bye, bye. Well, big thank you to Russ there, who is lining up. Uh, currently just uh, ticking along. You can just see him on your screen there with the yellow beacon and the uh, chevron over his head. As uh, the time ticks down, we're going to run across. And let's bring you the map first of all. Because the volcano afterparty is a bit different to most. We go around the virtual world of Zwift and we're going around what is an extended loop. It goes out into the islands, it comes across and round, goes through the volcano, goes out again around the big loop once again, as you can see on your map, before coming eventually in to the island and then ascending the climb. We've got lap after lap, it's basically effectively three laps of the main circuit, but then the after party comes and that after party is pretty tough stuff because you go up the climb and it just goes round and round and round and round and round and round, round as you can see uh, circling round and round and round and that is the climb up to the top so from the start we head out left we go through under the tunnels we come underneath past where the entrance to the main climb is up across the main turns so through the Italian Villa, so through the uh, sprint line there, then back round the loop again, coming back in. It's going to be really interesting to see who can deal with what is a real virtual world. And uh, we are going to be heading off there very, very shortly. As you can see from the map below, key part of this is the profile. 
Now the profile, as you can see, the spiral at the end, we talked about it going round and round and round. Our riders will go around the main loop, you can see uh, on the course there, they're just gonna circle time and time again until they hit the climb and then it's a spiral to the top. Most of the route is a flat, as our riders just say, now we're gonna get our riders away. But the end of it is a massive climb, but there are bumps on the way through. So short run in, followed by big spiral climb to finish as we corkscrew our way all the way up to the top of the volcano. Let's see who is going to be riding well on the way around. Let's see who is going to be fast. And remember, Russ, our yellow beacon, is going to be the rider out there. Now, our riders have just set off. We've just got about 14 seconds on the clock. And as you can see, we're just uh, running here behind uh, Russ, just on that view. And you can just see the riders just all come streaming through at the moment. So lots of our regular faces, lots of our regular riders on there. Make sure you keep watching your screens and don't forget, of course, support the people who support your sport. I want to say a massive thank you to all the guys who are down across the bottom on the banners who are supporting down in cycling and, of course, all the guys, including in particular Zwift, who have kept us powered up all the way through lockdown and all the way into the summer. So the ride sitting off, this is where Russ is going to need to control it. We're going to drop across to our main screen. Let's see who's doing the damage already. So here we go, out on the main screen and we can uh, see the uh, pack are motoring on uh, through, taking the dive off, just focused on us at the moment with 125 watts. Let's uh, jump up to the helicopter and you can uh, see from the helicopter shot, the two beacons there, the yellow and the red are together, pretty much all that group are together as they set off and it's looking uh, pretty smooth at the moment. Our red beacon, Martin Bolt, the ever dependable Mr. Bolt is uh, in there. Good to see you, mate. And uh, thank you very much for taking on that role once again. Good to see uh, that we have uh, Trevor Key in here, Tom Barry's in it, Amy Dench uh, got in here, Amy Moore, Mark Thwaites, a regular. Good to see Mark back again. Andy Fraser's in here, Jono's back in. Looks like uh, Sir Rodney's back, uh, Charles Brown's in, Uncle Ted's back again. Uh, Mr. Donahue's here as well. Bryce Smithy making the uh, cut, coming and joining us. We've got Jess Evans uh, from ASOS uh, team are with us. Uh, Tom Scott's in here. And it really is a who's who. And of course, uh, Sir Mr. Dan Cogan. Let's have a little look at Dan at the moment. So let's drop across it to where Dan is. And let's see if we can uh, get a view of Dan from up above. Sitting right on the back of this group, as you can see. And at the moment, Dan rolling along 117 watts. He's got to be a firm favourite when it comes to the top of the climb. It's going to be challenged. Now, I don't think I've seen Paul Oldham in the list of riders at the moment. And I think he's not here. I think we've got Phil Pierce from Hope Factory Racing. But not seeing uh, Paul Oldham at the moment. Going to just double check on our way through. But certainly looks like it may be down to uh, Phil to do the business for the Hope team. This time around, good to see Ali Akers is back on the group as well as Andy. So uh, good to see lots of our riggers, including uh, a man I've got to say a massive thank you to because we're going to cut across to one of our key riders. Great to have him back. Mr. Varelli is in here. We're going to try and just jump up around and see if we can get a uh, picture. So a big thank you to Stefano, not just for coming on the chain gang, but uh, I know he's been working hard, he's been missing in action, you might have noticed he's not been with us on all of the chain gangs so far. But Stefano, uh, one of the people who's really had to work incredibly hard to make the uh, business changes needed in the light of COVID. It's not just the guys on here who are riding. But Stefano, uh, the uh, manager, general manager of Nonas, and I've got to say a big thank you Stefano. I went last night for an anniversary meal and it has to be said, it was absolutely stunning. Two hungry cyclists going into none as we cleaned every single plate. Not that that was in the slightest bit of a problem. Uh, absolutely exquisite food, great service, great safe environment, and can't recommend it enough. Um, big thank you, Stefano. It was a wonder meal and it was great to be there make sure you get down to know so we need to support the guys who have uh, made the changes and have been uh, struggling we've all been uh, hidden away and not been out and uh, heading around and visiting plenty of establishments make sure you get it done uh, stefano and all the team at nonas in uh, sheffield made us particularly welcome last night and uh, definitely 
worth making a trip over for if you need uh, to get your Italian fix if you're not able to go to Italy I know uh, Russ has had his uh, holidays cancelled to Italy so we'll see where Russ ends up you could do worse mate if you want to take to Italy to get down to Donners now enough about my real out I'm beginning to sound like David Duffield I won't go telling you about the cheese because we managed to avoid cheese almost all together but the uh, chilli uh, was definitely very nice indeed so cross to the riding one big group all together at the moment and uh, riding nice and steadily through the tunnels if you've not seen Zwift before this is just one of our fantastic worlds that we have access to this is in through the tunnels there are climbs on here and you can see everybody is just rolling up on to the climb and our riders just climbing out of the tunnels you can see just uh, drifting above sea level here as they come out from the tunnels into the uh, central island here and uh, making the way up into daylight as they come up to the top of the climb you can see our riders still just about holding that pack all together here as we take a little bit of a pan back let's have a look at the back of that group now still nicely together rush just rolling around near the back i think the legendary andy singleton legend his own lifetime the uh, semi-pro uh, Mr. Singleton, and nicely tucked in the back there. Looks like Mr. Barnell's in here, Brown's in here, Shelley's in here. Bryce Smithy nicely in this group as well. Let's see if we can get across to Bry. So Bryce Smithy, a TV commentator, pundit, coach, and all-round good guy, one of the nicest guys you can meet. Of course, a former national champion as well. And let's see if we can get right above Bry in that blue and a white kit now. Bry, I think, has got his uh, beard in action on his avatar. There we go. So, Bryce Smith, he ran the standard Zwift bike with standard Zwift aero wheels. Black helmet on there. Keep an eye out, Bry. Former national road champ, of course. Uh, and uh, definitely a uh, legend when it comes to commentary. Very insightful and always with some great detailed knowledge on his way in. Just rolling around there, not too far off at the pace now. One or two riders just struggling a little bit at the back, I think because the pace is picking up a little bit here. Let's take a look at the back of the group and let's see where those riders are as our helicopter starts to pan out. Now, it looks to me like uh, Amy Morn and uh, John have just been, this is little Matt Pritchard being uh, pushed back a little bit. It looks like uh, Sir Rodney is gonna be one of our riders who is just off the back. We're gonna try and jump across uh, to Sir Rodney, yep. He has been distance here. So a couple of riders just off the back looks like. So Rodney is one of them. And Lee Allen is uh, going to be the uh, second. So to Rodney just being distance. Currently doing 3.5 watts per kilo. Trying to get himself back on. Looks like Lee Allen is being distance. We're doing zero watts per kilo. He's down there with me at the moment. So uh, so Rodney currently 11 seconds off the back of uh, the uh, group. He's doing 3.6 watts per kilo. So he should get himself back on. I think Russ just asking to uh, drop the pace off. And I think it is going to be hopes... Uh, Phil Pierce, who's on the back. Yep, and that's the Green of Hope Factory racing. All right, uh, let's have a little look to see if Phil's got his bell on his bike. And no, no trademark bell, Phil. You need to uh, get up a few levels. He's just on the wheel of Mr. Locke there. Locke, of course, are one of our regulars and one of the men we know can be right up at the front of affairs. All right, it's a fast ride at the moment, though. That group is well and uh, truly pushing on at the moment. Just taking a look and back, looks like 12 seconds to Sir Rodney at 3.6. So the group needs to uh, not the front of pace off at the moment. The draft effect on Zwift, meaning that our riders are really motoring. This pack is together by one rider who at 3.5 balls per kilo isn't getting back on at the minute. And it shows you the difference being in that group is making. So Phil Pierce just working his way up and through the group at the moment it's like uh, Andy Singleton is right in here as well Jesse's riding strongly Mr Hall's in here as well there's lots of our regular riders now I think we're going to see uh, a couple of people uh, heading back to just uh, try and uh, pick it up our rider behind you need some group help put back there so he's going to need the front uh, to hold tight there's going to be plenty of sprints for these riders uh, to take action you can just uh, see and the riders uh, just are coming through the boat. So see behind though, the climb is drifting people back. In the top right of your screen, it's only 1%, but they really are in ones and twos back there now. Just to watch him, Russ, just starting to drift back with that yellow beacon just uh, dropping off towards the back. And that group is well and truly split. So it looks sort of like uh, Locke, Oxenham, uh, Rodney, and uh, Waiter Roberts is just at the back there. 
Give her giving us a 10 seconds streaming in this is at nine Russ currently sitting at six seconds down on uh, the main pack as the pack goes through uh, it's going to be uh, reliant on the guys at the front not to push on too hard these guys know the skill but most people i think on here have ridden this before but like any chain gang the aim is to wind it as we go on rather than to go for us so uh, and he's up there from uh, Martin Bolt, uh, which is uh, the crowd that's gone out, and that is uh, to try and uh, drop the pace off at the front. We're going to work our way up towards front. It looks sort of like uh, Killingsworth at the moment, just rolling it at 2.8. And we'll see if uh, that's uh, going to back off as they come around that corner. To the moment, Phil Pearson uh, dropping back, Russ dropping back, look uh, like Jason Kenny's. Uh, Distance and trying to get himself back in again, but 17 seconds now separating the very front to the very back. So, we're going to need a regroup uh, from the front to the back. So, Killingsworth dropping down to a 1.8, 2.5 now. Just trying to uh, hold the uh, pace back a little bit here. Looks like Bryce Smith has got on to the group to uh, try and hold it back a little bit as well. And so that doesn't uh, pick up too much. Tom Bowering doing the business there, sitting at zero watts per kilo, just rolling in the group, just disrupting the front, trying to break it up as we start heading down now. As uh, you'll be able to see, just going to come down around the side of the waterfall at the moment. Here we go, down the side of the waterfall we are, as uh, Mr. Killingsworth just starts to get rolled a little bit on the way in, and it looks like one or two of our riders just starting uh, to lift it up. You can hear we're on the cobbles. As we now start to drop and down, it looks like we're going to take the uh, left hand turn down, and away we go from the uh, village. We're onto that descent, and uh, this is where the uh, riders are going to need to uh, keep it steady because they have got a big gap in front to back. You can see the dust being kicked up from that front pack. Uh, so the uh, riders at the back still distance. Now, what is that gap going to be? It looks to me like a group now sitting at uh, nearly a 40 seconds down on our leading group. So let's see if uh, this is uh, going to be on. It's a big old uh, jump across the uh, gap and now really stretched out. 35 seconds the gap on the way uh, through. So it looks like Russ has gone back. They've got the group. Let's see if we can drop our way back in to that group at the uh, back. Let's jump across to where Russ is at the minute. Oh, they're in ones and twos here. So Phil Pierce, oh, looks like Craig Genther's uh, not too far off the pace. Oxenham's in here, locks drop back as well. Now they're gonna try and pull that gap back down again. You see Genther now starting to uh, push on here as this group have got to form up and work as a group together. So Phil Pierce, one of the riders who's very, very strong with uh, Russ. These there are two riders at the back now. Looks like Russ acting as a sweeper, 60, 17 seconds to the main group at the moment. As long as the front of the group hasn't split clear. And already it is getting very, very fractured on the run around. And you can see it's fantastic scenery in uh, Zwift. If you had the chance to create a world, why not create one with castles or with fantastic volcanoes or with mountains? with tunnels, you name it, it's out there. Remember, we've got the Alpe Zwift out there. We've got ourselves, what well, is basically a replica of the Alpe d'Huez, as uh, Russ rolls along. You can just see they're starting to close in on the group in front, Martin Bolt currently at 11 seconds. And you can see Russ is working in here. Looks like Chris from the Alliance MTB has uh, gone back as well. He's in this uh, chasing a group with Lot with Donahue. Uh, looks like they all really are starting to push on, trying to get the group back together again. Now you see Martin Bolt up there shouting easy up at the front. And the group is uh, certainly uh, very, very fractured indeed. Front to back at the moment, it looks like it's about uh, going to be about 26 seconds. And it looks like Ali Akers and uh, Jess O'Brien are the riders who've gone up to the front to tell everybody to knock it off a little bit here. So uh, O'Brien up near the uh, front here and the riders at the front group are just doing about 1.9 to 2 watts per kilo. Uh, at the moment the uh, chasing pack are not coming back. If we take a little bit of a look up, this is where we see our first uh, view up above 
and you can see what the gap is on that helicopter chopper two beacons are uh, working to close the uh, gap down at the moment our riders uh, at the moment are locked pretty much together if we zoom in and uh, not quite all on screen we zoom back out again we're going to come into that right hand hairpin turn now let's jump up above these riders we watch uh, jess o'brien in this group she's centered in that front pack at the moment now we're going to take a little bit of a look it is indeed uh, one line as it goes along it's one big long line and you can see as we look back you can see russ in the distance on that beacon as uh, he works his way up to the back of martin bolt that's the back of the pack back there is the front of the uh, group starts to come round up to the top of the climb so what the front group now do need to do is take it nice and steady over the top and it's going to let that group that are chasing behind get on you can see them just in the distance there starting to reform but it looks like that climb might have had the effect that was needed we're going to see if it's going to come back in there we go now the front of there with brian smithy just trying to hold them all together in one place making life a little bit easier behind as Russ said, it's not Russ we need to worry about, it is the groups behind who have just been distanced a little bit a lot of the time. The early distancing is not because of ability of riders, it's not about fitness, it's not about strength, it's actually about tech issues where riders kit not necessarily all sinking together. Now, round the side of the volcano we go and into the volcano for the first time, the lava here. You can see just how vivid it is inside here. It is like something from the Lord of the Rings film and uh, has to be uh, said very very tough still looks like red beacon inside of martin bolt everybody's just about together on the way in here and the uh, group just about to reform we'll take a zoom in on our map we're actually underground at the moment you're going to see we're going to take a couple of uh, wiggles that will get us out from the volcano you can see the light at the end of the tunnel quite literally over there as we start to come in and that group starting to reform top right of the screen so to come back together and just watching uh, O'Brien here, Jess O'Brien riding nice and smoothly through this group as they come through the tunnel. So the advantages of our cameras, it can go through where real life cameras can't. So as we take a little bit of a look across, you can see this uh, group still reasonably strung out with one or two riders just behind the, the uh, beacons. That's uh, hot stuff out there today as our riders now start to head around. Now they're going to take the left hand turn as they head out. And uh, pretty much most of the people all back together again. We're just uh, taking a look at the back of that pack. And it looks like most of these are riders there now. It looks like Mr. Kipling's in here. This is Barry Kipling. Let's see if Kipling's hair and beard are any more. Uh, representative of real life yeah they're definitely as great as barry is in real life there we go mr kipling uh, doing the business regular on the national scene in uh, lots of disciplines and uh, a very handy rider as well meanwhile lots of our riders looking pretty smooth on the way through here let's jump across to uh, morn amy morn is a riding should be in the uh, training of peaks kit which means we might have to just jump up uh, about there we go so Amy just in the pack there, just nicely sandwiched in the middle of the pack. And it looks like a little bit of a uh, drop back, currently kicking back up to 5.9 watts per kilo. And that's to get herself back in. I think a little power drop out there from Amy means that she's gone towards the back. She's with Phil Piss and uh, Mr. McKinnis. That's uh, going to be uh, Stro McKinnis, I think, at the uh, back of the group. He's going to work his way up for sure. He's one of our regular riders. It is Stro who is currently uh, in the company of Phil Pierce. So just uh, see uh, Struan starting to work his way up just alongside uh, Amy at the moment. And uh, Struan now working his way forward. Let's jump across and have a look at Uncle Ted. How's our Uncle Ted doing? 200 watts? Nice power, mate. Uh, Uncle Ted will no doubt be on a Tron bike. He keeps on offering to lend it to me and it never seems to happen. Uh, there on the uh, nice uh, pink bike, better kit, nicer uh, kit than necessary, uh, always the uh, case and uh, matches a pink cap, I don't seem to have managed to get one of those yet, it's got to happen yet, complete with the uh, tour jersey on there, and as the uh, kilometres tick by, still nicely rolling along, 55 kilometres an hour at the moment, as we uh, start to head our way down and along the side of the beach nearly around to complete lap number one as uh, so these riders are going to come underneath the banner for the 
first time. They're then going to go past the start point, so through they go. Quick swig of OT, keep the old voice going on the way through. So just watching uh, Uncle Ted here, nicely uh, ticking on, nice and smooth, 94 revs per minute. How does he do it at his age? Very, very smooth indeed. Um, next up, we're going to go across uh, to Mr. Thornley. Let's see who's uh, how he's uh, rolling at the moment. Looks pretty smooth. Glenn in this group is there in his uh, traditional Peugeot jersey. Looking smooth. Looks like uh, Mr. Dickinson is back once again. Dickinson some riding for Bolsover and District. Currently got the uh, Yenzi Shot Legs jersey on at the moment. And it's uh, quite a nice uh, jersey there. There we go. Very nice uh, group according to Rust, and it's definitely uh, true for sure. So, the NC jersey on the shoulders there. As uh, the um, rider going through there, that's Paul Dixon of uh, Bolsover and District. Let's go across to another of our regulars. Uh, one of the Maverick and Goose uh, duo. Well, only one of the uh, pair are here today. Missing uh, Victoria Chavari out uh, busy in Costa Rica. Last seen. Uh, perfecting the, the uh, swim over in uh, Costa Rica. The weather a little bit warmer than it has been over in uh, Sheffield of recent days. But Chris, the uh, partner in crime, is here and rolling along very nicely at the front at the moment. So let's take a little look at Chris and Matt from the Alliance uh, MTB. Currently riding in the black with the uh, black bike, deep wheels on and there, plenty of thumbs up on his uh, back and these riders nicely pushing along. We're going to take a look and see who else is in here. Mike Killingsworth, the uh, rider who we had a chat with uh, at the start of last week, looking pretty smooth on his way through. Jono's in here as well, he's, he's still riding nicely. In, this group. in fact, most of these riders are pretty comfy. And uh, at the moment, Martin Bolton Rust are down and sharing that uh, job at the back with Matt Lock and Ryan Williams, who are just keeping an eye on these riders as they come through the group, holding together. Steve Ritson's in here as well. Good to see Steve riding. We'll just take a, a little bit of a, a look at uh, Steve, see so if we can catch a view of him in the middle of this group. Easier said than done. When we've got a group, let's get up above him on the shot there. What riding the, the Tour uh, jersey for the uh, virtual Tour de France there. And uh, just see riding that standard Zwift bike again. Deep wheels in here. Now, difficult choice to make today. What do you choose? Do you choose fast aero wheels? Do you choose a climbing wheel? Or do you choose something that's a mix of the two? You can see it's pretty rolling so far as our riders make their way down and through the tunnels here underneath the sea out in uh, Zwift rolling on and uh, through and at the moment most of the riders choosing deep wheels but nothing too mad no disc wheels today as these uh, riders come on uh, through and just uh, watching uh, Steve Ridson roll through with this group pushing 220 watts at the moment now on his way keeping it smooth at uh, just under 90 uh, revs per minute Take it, we're going to take a little hunt around. Let's see who else is running in this group now. It's good to have Jess Evans back, Jess, one of our ASOS uh, ambassadors. We're going to go uh, take a, a little bit of a look at Jess because Jess, one of our riders, we need to watch as we go on to the climb. Jess are riding nice and smoothly here and uh, working her way around comfortably. The uh, bunch, no problems for Jess, just being passed there by anyone. Just don't uh, get in camera shot at the moment. We just jump up back past uh, Amy. I think we're going to be back. So here we go. It is uh, going to uh, be Jess and uh, one of those riders is a former National Healthline champion. One of those riders we know is going to be good when we come to the volcano. Now, Jess has access to plenty of different wheels on a Zwift and she's gone up for the super lightweight wheels here. You can see they're very shallow, they're going to climb really well. But it does mean you're at a bit of a disadvantage on the faster section. So it is really playing to her strengths when it comes to the climb. Now let's see if we can find somebody who's maybe gone the opposite direction. Because Jess we know can climb her well. And the question is, is she going to be able to hang on in here as it starts to speed up? And these are riders that have come through. We're now up on to the climb. Now, Russ at the back, keeping on getting uh, spat out the back here. Maybe he's just done a bit too much riding. We know Russ has got the uh, power to get on, though. 
I don't think anybody's worried about Russ being off the back at the moment. There he comes up on to the climb. And uh, plenty of power in Russ's legs uh, to get himself up and over here on the uh, Donny Chain Gang. Don't forget, of course, all this uh, brought to you all the way through the winter and into the summer by Downing Cycling. Russ Downing and myself, Matt Payne, uh, of Full Speed Events, stitching together not just uh, the ride, but of course, all of the coverage as well. So these riders going along smoothly. They see just over with our light riders pushing up 3.3 watts per kilo on the way through. Russ and Martin still holding the back of the group. Just seeing one or two power ups coming in. If you've not seen a power up, but don't forget, of course, this is how you can make life slightly easier. Engage the power up, hit the button, and it will let you ride smoother, whether that's a draft in, a feather, to get less weight and less effect of gravity. Uh, it is going to allow you to be more aerodynamic or in fact when you're racing you can get even a ghosting one to hide you from your competitors as you head around the circuit. And the Yake is in here, he's running in the uh, GB, uh, B, Recycling GB kit in here. The AD Dench in the group as well today. AD of course a, a regular triathlete and uh, time trial rider. And uh, great to see that the uh, TT series all got off to such a good start. Eddie and Gail uh, stitching the whole series together, doing a great uh, job of that. As uh, this uh, group uh, worked the way up, and at the moment, Eddie Dench there in uh, the uh, red jersey in the uh, beer and bikes jersey, and just holding the uh, wheels nice and uh, comfortably as they go around, just to go underneath the uh, gantry there. The group's just about holding together. We've got to the right-hand side, 17k of the 41 kilometers done. Uh, his heart rate at the moment sitting around about 155, 70 rest per minute. Well, that's a proper triathlete and test a set of revs if there ever was some. Come on, Aidy, get some pedaling done, kid. See, see, uh, Aidy's uh, revs at the moment, nice and low, 68. Uh, is a very low cadence for our riders on the way through and the bunch just starting to break up again this is where the riders try and close the gaps down they don't want to let the gap go but what this has the effect of doing is of breaking the bunch up and that is where things get very very interesting indeed because if that is what happens that's when things get difficult now trevor crehan is here once again to try and drop across to trevor Easier said than done in this fast moving bunch. We'll get him yet. Here we go. In with Trevor. And uh, Trevor, another of our regular riders, another of the uh, regular team that will take, that will team up and uh, drive on in uh, one of our groups. Uh, generally not in group number one, but maybe group two, three, or four on the road. But at the moment, uh, sitting uh, pretty smooth. We're just taking a look back. Three or four riders now starting just to feel the uh, pressure at the back of the uh, group here, just behind a rust. Now, who is uh, starting to uh, get this? I think Carl Johnson is going to be in amongst this uh, group at the back here now. Let's jump up above Carl. Is Carl at the back? Is anybody behind him? I think Martin Bolt, the beacon, is behind. Mike Killingsworth just in front of him. So, sidecar. Uh, Rider and uh, passenger on that extraordinaire, Mr. Killingsworth uh, on there, and uh, just pushing on at 2.8 watts per kilo, trying to stay with the group. Eight, uh, six seconds down, Carl Johnson at eight seconds, Martin Bolt currently at 14 seconds. So the turns here and on the way in towards the Italian villas are starting to put paid that is coming around that turn. You can just see Carl Johnson making that turn, but up in the front of Carl. That group is starting to disappear. The gaps are opening up. Barry Kipling at the back of that group, moving up in front of Chris from the Alliance MTB. Looks like Mr. Oxenham's rolling at the back of the group. So it looks like Martin Locke as well with Mike Killingsworth and uh, Carl Johnson being a distance. And now on the way up this climb, and they've been spat out of the back of the group. Now, this is where Killingsworth and Johnson need to work together. Can Johnson push his way up to Killingsworth and take a look at uh, Mike? There you go, Mike, with that uh, jersey on at the moment, making his uh, way along. He's at 2.1 watts per kilo. And you can see the uh, riders are pushing back into the bunch in front. They want to close that gap up, and you can see it's opened up one rider behind Killingsworth, and that is uh, going to be uh, Johnson. Then it's the red beacon behind him. 
up in front of him though it is going to be Chris on the Alliance uh, MTB who's the rider who's pushing him to get back into this group now can he get back in you can see at the moment it is tough stuff we're on the way past the waterfall once again the group is diving down to the left and at the moment uh, Chris is going to have to push harder come on Chris give it some beans mate he doesn't want to get distance here we've got a drop down there's a group of about three or four riders in front there and it looks like it is going to be a lock of McGuinness in there Mourns in this group in the front now Chris can get onto their wheels he's going to get some assistance this time uh, to push on remember if you get in a group you get that uh, much easier on the way through let's take a little bit of a look the group being front this is going to be uh, Amy Mourn it is going to be Edwards Kipling and Dickinson this group of four riders as uh, Chris from the Alliance MTB is up at three and a half watts, three point seven watts per kilo. He wants to get on this group, but he's going to make contact. Here we go. He's onto this group now, and he should come flying alongside them. So the four behind have become five. They're twelve seconds down on the back of the main group. So Martin Bolt off the very back. Our beacon sweeping from the back. Then Carl Johnson currently sitting at. 46 seconds down on this group but Mike Killingsworth at 40 seconds so I think Killingsworth and Johnson likely to come together then it is Edwards at Dickinson Chris in here we've got Amy Moore in here Barrett Kipling in here this is our second group on the road they 18 seconds down on our leading group this is our leading group though sweeping through with Russ just sitting at the back but that group has gone and it's not going to see Edwards Dickinson uh, a uh, Alliance MTB group again now. I think the pace just a little bit too high. It's like Borelli just sitting in front here of uh, Russ and Singleton. They're in the danger zone. They're hovering around there. They can't uh, do that for too long. Now it looks like our helicopters are getting a ghost bike. That's the uh, best shot I've seen of Russ standing all day. Here we go. But you couldn't do that again, Russ, if you tried to lose the bike. So here we go. Russ just on the uh, back there. And uh, as uh, you can see, he's uh, sweeping along. 24 seconds down the gap. And indeed, the chasing group not going to come back now. I think uh, they've uh, been uh, left to their fate. And uh, I think it's a nice, good group to work uh, hard together. We'll just drop back to them here. Five riders together. So Dickinson, Edwards, Morn, Kipling, uh, together with Chris from the Alliance uh, M at CB, they're pushing along and round about three watts per kilo. Uh, I don't think they are going to see the front again. Meanwhile, Killingsworth, I think he's going to be joined here by Johnson. And Killingsworth just uh, just pushed uh, back off the pace a little bit here. And uh, I think him and uh, Johnson together. Here we go. Yep, the two riders are together. So Johnson and Killingsworth now in front of our sweeper, Martin Bolt. And then in front, a minute up the uh, road. It's the uh, group of five. This is our group of five on their way through here. Uh, just on that lower slope. So meanwhile, the group at the very, very front are about to go head up on to the uh, bigger climb. And if we just drill off this and take a little bit of a look, you're going to see already on those slopes on the hillside. You can just see around this corner climbing up goes the main bunch. You can just see the figures disappearing off into the distance. And you can see the height of this climb. It's not big when you're racing it, though. This climb it feels absolutely horrendous. And it regularly splits groups when racing because it's not very long. But this is where you find it really takes effect as you come up here. And at the moment, these riders looking very compact. It's a nice compact group they've got here. They've got a minute and eight on the group behind them. So they do need to stay together. They don't want to drop off the back because the next group back is a long, long way back. But at the moment... This group are looking super smooth, and uh, if they stay together, I think we've got uh, another good group out on the chain gang who are going to be uh, rolling the way. And looks like uh, Mr. Kipling just accelerating back into the group now. What's happening on the back of the bunch? Let's take a look. It looks like Ali Akers is our rider who is just at the back here. Ali separated only by one or two seconds. Now it's the time to push Ali. You've got to get on the back of the group. You can't afford to be distanced. It's 48 seconds, 49 seconds back to the next group. You've got to close those wheels down. You can't afford to let the gaps go. So Ali it is at the moment now. Pushing in through the group. Just going in front of Hertz. Going in front of Donahue. 
So Don Hughes in here, and it looks so. If you watch the back of the screen, these are four riders, five riders are going to have to push on here. They can't afford to get dropped off the group. The gaps are opening up here behind Russ. Uh, as Russ says, I think somebody's put the hammer down. It's one long line. If you take a look on the map, you can see it's strung out in front with groups opening up. And I think basically people have pushed on up over the climb. Let's take a look up at the uh, very, very front of this. It could well be it's Ben Hall who's uh, just up at the front. We're just watching Ben. It's a big group, this though. So let's get up above and take a little bit of a look up back behind. There's a fair mass of riders in there. And I think just seeing acres at the back here, everybody just about pushing back into this group, taking a look back down the road. Can't see anybody in sight. So it looks like, and despite there's been a bit of a push, Russ has gone up on to the front. And here we go. This is our leading group now. This is group number one on the road. Nice a bunch of about 40 or so riders in this group holding together. And that uh, looks like uh, most of the main suspects who we'd expect to see up in here. Kogan's in here, Thorny's in here, Gibbons is in here as well, Pritchard, Scott. Looks like Dolby's is in here, Andy Zakers is in here, Ali Akers is in here as uh, well. Jono's up in this group. Let's jump in with a weird uh, Jono at the moment. And the group nicely rolling along here. And uh, the group has opened up a gap onto group number two. But as they come up to the left hand turn, now take the sharp left hand turn you can see out on the map and it just uh, taking its turn around here so nicely reforming hopefully it's going to uh, increase as we go down you just see five or six riders at the back of here just starting to uh, maybe just miss a little bit of a, a pace miss one beat and you could be off the back those gaps will open very very quickly on the downhills you've got to keep it nice and close together So Jono working smoothly in here, 235 a wasp, Mr. Oxenham just rolling around the back of this group. Uh, so group looking good. So Kogan for the first attack, I think Kogan uh, is always up for the first attack. We'll see whether that happens, 25k done now. Now there seems to have been a little bit of a uh, lull in... Uh, in pace at the moment hopefully it's not going to go too mad too soon let's try the dangerous move of giving a russ a call you never know has he got any breath left hello russ i'm coming <laughs> how, how how are you going? Are you just about holding it together, mate? Yeah, it's not bad actually. I keep getting dropped, trying to uh, look after people, but just think. People think... went back forward at twenty seconds, and it was thirty. I was like, nah. No, no, I'm not, really, I'm not really sick of leaving. I'm just uh, hovering around the back. You know, when your uh, teammates in the cars and sit around the back of the peloton. Never. Yeah, there's it looks like another split just in danger of happening behind you. And they are riders who are have gonna be being on the limit to be there, I think, at the moment. So um you're gonna need to be attentive. I think it's a couple of seconds back to Hurt Borelli, Donahue and Stelling Lamb. But the group behind them working really, really well together. The five when we've looked back, nice pace, which is what you want, isn't it? Yeah, I'm looking at the uh at the stream there on the uh the helicopter shot it looking good uh, i think we're just right up to where the third is for the KOM. yeah we'll definitely on the shot and there we are they were working well so that's what i've always wanted on the gang you know when you get dropped have a look around form a group get to the finish yeah it looks like another group just gone off the back of the bunch about eight maybe nine riders now so interesting to see looks like uh, you've got a group of nine currently about uh Sit about five or six seconds down, but it's a well-working group with some good names in there. So I, I suspect they're going to be going well. The group behind them, 
sitting at about two minutes now, so you did right not to hang in around in that one, Russ. We'll let you get back up to the front, mate. Trying to, mate. Have a bad day. <laughs> it's all that Ragnall Zwift you've been better. doing. I'm not feeling great, I'll give you that one. Yeah, 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 we've heard that before from you. We expect to see you fighting out for the finish with Mr. Kogan, who's looking good, isn't he? I might lead him out to the bottom next time and pull the pin. <laughs> proper sprinter lead out. Yeah, just really mix it up for them. Well, let's see. We're going to jump back with you in a minute. I'm just going to go jump into the group behind you because I think they're at 20 seconds now. And we'll give them a little bit of a feature of all these riders because there's some good riders in there. And uh, good luck, mate. We'll see whether you hold on in up the climb. Wish me luck. Good luck, mate. So Russ down in there midway through the ride, just watching Ali Akers here. This is a really nice group that's actually formed behind the main group here. So it looks like it is going to be Borelli in here. Singleton is in here. The famous Andy Singleton is in this group. Stefano Borelli in the group as well. Looks like Donahue's in here. Rodney's in here as well. It looks Trevor Crehan in this. It looks like Mr. Hurt riding in here. And uh, this is a nice, a nice group behind. This is what we want to happen on the chain gang if the group gets split. What we want to see is we want to see those groups forming. And once the leading pack gets fractured, then we see groups form behind. So looks like it is going to be uh, Joel Hurt in here, and uh, Joel Hurt, uh, Vincent Donahue, Andy Singleton, uh, Trevor Crehan, Paul uh, Dickinson leading the chasing group behind. But uh, this is a nice group, currently 34 seconds down on our leading riders, but this is group number two on the road. Let's go to group number three and let's catch up with what's happening there. So here we go, across to group of three. This is group number three. This has got Chris from the Alliance at MTB, Barry Kipling in here, Amy Moore's in here, Edwards is in here as well. And uh, this uh, group of uh, five uh, look to be rolling around nice and smoothly. They're about two minutes down on the group in front here. As you can see uh, the five coming through, uh, missing their usual partner in crime. Uh, Victoria Chivaria not running uh, on uh, the chain gang this week. Going to be uh, back, I think, potentially Thursday uh, to join a partner in crime or the uh, team uh, out there this is uh, the next group behind them we have two riders together this is a uh, mike killingsworth and uh, carl johnson who are on their way down into the tunnels and then at the back of the field doing his traditional sweeper roll we have uh, mr bolt who is on his way he's about to drop in you can just see going underneath the uh, fractured hoops over the top so martin bolt 42 seconds down on Killingsworth and uh, Johnson. And our next two riders up the road. And then uh, the uh, group in front of those. This is the uh, group containing uh, Barry Kipling, uh, Paul Dickinson, Chris from the Alliance MTB, Amy Moore in here as well, all rolling round. And uh, then in front of them, this is a group, or was a group number two? We're going to have to get that uh, double checked. So. Uh, there we go, coming around in front. So this is a, what was group a two on the road. So uh, it's got Stoney Line here in here. Trevor Crean, uh, Joel Hurt, looks like Ali Akers is in here as well. Ron is in here. Now let's jump up in front because I think the back of the main pack just starting to fracture as it comes up onto the climb. It is indeed Ali Akers in with a, a three some here. And we're going to just uh, jump up into the sky to take a little bit more of a, a look across. So it looks like we're off onto the uh, Ben's Russ just holding the front of the uh, main group up there. And you just see them around the corner. Uh, this group of three just being detached here. Andy Akers, uh, Kuzlis and um, looks like Mr. Brown is in this group as well. Let's see if we can just dive in with them. But behind the uh, group is a well and a truly distanced it's at 22 seconds uh, i think uh, to a uh, fault in it looks like annie fraser is not going to get in with this group so fraser just a little bit further back then faulting on his own as well so faulting on his way into the bridge fraser halfway over the bridge andy acres uh, mr brown as well as two slugs on the way up to the front 
let's have a little bit of a look this is the back of the main pack we just here with uh, mr gelsthorpe rolling his way up let's see if we can drop up and around see how that group is doing it's holding together just about and you can uh, just uh, see gelsthorpe pushing on in up through the group here and as we uh, look back it is just about holding oh it's so close there's one or two riders just behind us looks like uh, just hanging on to the wheels it's getting tough back there you can just see one or two people just starting to struggle here and uh, as we go up and nearer the front you can see four four and a half watts per kilo five watts per kilo is not unusual up at the front of this group let's take a look right up to the very front now and let's see who's pushing on. i think we're going to see tom bowering not too far off the front here indeed he is right up near the front so tom barring one of the downing cycling coach riders in the mix here and uh, it looks like hall phil pierce dainty kenning bowery wade Roberts is right up in the mix gonna take this left hand turn and uh, come around now bowering leading this whole group out as they come around and the pressure is on on at the front kogan pushing on Phil Pierce up at about 6 watts per kilo. Seeing a 7 watts per kilo coming out there from one or two riders up at the front. It's putting the pressure on four riders now detached off the back of this group once again. So another four have gone. It really is a war of attrition from the front group. It's been spitting riders in twos and threes off the back of the group. I'm going to take a little bit of a look back, see who has gone. It may well be it's going to be Jess Evans who's been distanced. Here it is. So Jess, one of the riders that's been distanced, Luke Taylor, in this group as well. So these are our riders. It's Genther in this group. Jess Evans looks like Shelley's in here as well. And uh, these four riders do need to push on now as they come on towards the climb. The riders in front are gonna be diving down. You're just gonna see them on the, in the distance. Russ holding the back of the group there. Uh, the gap has opened up it's at about seven seconds and they're working hard at the moment but it's like riding on treacle when you come down these bends and you can see they're going to need to push uh, evans just going up to about four watts per kilo but the group in front is doing much the same and there are about 25 to 30 riders left in that leading group now and i think they have uh, seen the end of evans here uh, again to god as well 15 seconds it is up to the group let's jump up to the group it is holding steady up here so here we go this is the very front of the ride and you can see this is all that is left of that original group well over 60 riders initially and as we look back you can see absolutely no sign 16 seconds to that group of four it was a few seconds as they came out onto the climb on the way through towards italian villas but it really has opened up now 32 nearly 33k covered of the uh, 41k in total so it's not going to be long before we start going on and up into the climbing just watching these riders at the moment just watching to see where the group is splitting that our gap starting to open i think it's just in front of mark waits at the moment he's just pushing on in the orange there and you can see we've just seen one or two of the power that was being used people don't want to use them too early but you can't afford to let that gap go and i think we are going to see one or two people in difficulties very very quickly at the back of this group up at the front they're all holding together now into that right hand turn we go it's a sharp tight right hand turn and this is the way into the climb probably go the wrong way through the volcano from that which you would uh, expect we've been going in uh, towards the climb and turning left around the base of the climb we're now on to this and it's a vicious little start to the climb six percent as you go up and that has seen some damage done look at that to see pearson being distanced here mark thwaites at the very back here now thwaites doesn't have uh, weight on his uh, side let's say as he goes uh, through mark uh, is uh, up along with me he's one of our are more uh, gravitationally challenged riders let's say and uh, mark uh, sitting in there comfortably whilst we're on the flat now trying to push on but it looks like wood or pearson uh just being distance here and it is in ones and twos just jumping onto the back of the group here and uh, as you can see 
this is our leading pack and the gaps go again four percent climb up we're going to go up underneath the arch this is the volcano uh route this is where if you go through the volcano you do lap after lap after lap but we're now on our passage through it's the only time we're going to go through here before we go on to the climb proper and you can see behind the damage is well and truly being done the gaps are opening up luke stone pulling this group back in to the front here going onto the back wheels of um, gibbons bowering or williams here and it's like eddie danger making the uh, cut however behind ted's gone goddard has gone barnard has gone they're off the back you can see the drafting advantage being taken there power is going in to help with the draft you usually don't when riders are just feeling the pressure a little bit but this is the leading group this is all that is left now we're going to come round the opposite way towards the bridge you can see on the right hand side of the bridge that we've normally been going across to drop down towards the start line we're going to turn left and follow the side of the volcano around here and at the moment this leading group are there off at the up front i think the gap has opened yep 13 14 seconds back to ted to barnard to goddard 35 seconds to woodall 44 to pearson waits now uh, but we're nearly a minute behind and that's how fast that gap goes up so past the right hand turn goes our leading group here they're going to be over the top of uh, the among uh, over the uh, top of the liquid just distorted as they go now that's our leading group they are going to find themselves in to the volcano we're going to just uh, drop back down with them as they make their way in uh, towards the tunnels once again our leading group has well and truly been whittled down there's hardly anybody left of that massive pack that we saw initially but it really is a who's who glenn thorny and his minoxenum is in here dan kogan still comfortably in this group when is Kogan going to kick on that climb? Looks like Riston is in here as well. Pritchard in the group. This is it. We're on now. So let's see who is going to push on. We're seeing nearly five watts per kilo with this group. They are absolutely smashing it at the moment. And there's nothing to choose. The pressure is going to be on anybody who's sat near the back. They're going to be in the danger zone. I think that includes Gibbons at the moment and Downing rolling around the back at the moment. Kogan moving up towards the front. Is this a sign of things to come? Are they going to kick as they go on to the first of the slopes where you leave the traditional circuit? As they come out from the tunnels, here they go. And Smith at the moment pushing nearly 300 watts as they come out from the tunnel. We're going to come up to that left hand turn. There's a slight dip now. Here we go, our riders are dipping and down. You can see this pack is all still pretty much together as they're going to come down on to the slopes. We're coming up to that left hand turn. They're going to go sweeping round here and then they're going to spit up left underneath the arch. So here we go. Left they go and on to the climb proper. This is where it starts to kick up and it's up all the way now. And who is going to be able to lead on? And we're going to see an attack on the very first slopes here. It looks like these are riders are just about holding all together. Is Russ going to be able to keep up with this pack? He should do. They said he had tired legs. Let's see if that's just a racing excuse. I think uh, we're going to see Stone being distanced here. He's just holding on the back. Come on and get down those wheels. Mr. Locke is in here as well. Risden's in here. Then the pressure's on now. Kogan starts to push on. He's got himself up. Uh, he's working hard. It looks like down in his sitting close to the front. But Kogan is going here. Kogan's gone up to 10 watts per kilo. So the attack has gone from Kogan. We knew he was going to go early. He's done that. He's at 8.8. .8 and he's drag stripped it out already. They're on the slopes. You can see that the gradient is tough here. And he's out of the saddle here. 9 watts per kilo. 565 watts. Coming out from Kogan, Phil Pierce is answering this. So Pierce is uh, trying to respond to this with a 7.9, 7.6 watts per kilo. But at the moment, Kogan's going to be riding away. However, the pace is high, 38 kilometers per hour here from Kogan, who we're watching behind. You can just uh, see the riders are working to try and stay with him. But Kogan's on a 4% slope here. Now, you have to disregard the map slightly here because, as you can see, we have overlaid layers here 
from all of the different sections of the climb. Meanwhile, Kogan has got six seconds. He's got a look at him on this hillside. He's opened a six second gap. The beacon is going as a tall a pillar at the moment. And the nearest rider is gonna be Scott, who is coming now. Let's take a look at Scott. Scott's got the pressure on here. He's uh, kicking out at 363 watts. He's uh, nearly uh, 186 beats per minute, 94 revs. And he's looking good here. He's leading the chase with Phil Pierce on his wheels. Now everybody is in one long string. Now nobody is bunched up as the riders are absolutely being smashed apart. That pressure by Kogan that's got him an eight second lead on this gap. Has spat Oxen him off the back. Dolby's gone. Hall has gone. Looks like Ryan Williams not answering the charge here. And try to look at Ryan here. He's usually one of our faster riders when it comes to going uphill, but at the moment, Ryan is being distanced. I'm going to take a look at that hillside if we can in front of him. There we go. You can just see this. They go into the tunnels here. Ryan is working hard. He's at 5.47 watts a kilo. He's trying to get back on to those riders in front, but you can just see as they come into the next of the tunnels. He's going to have his work cut out to try and get up to the riders in front. The beacon is long gone. 15 seconds to Russ Downing, who's sitting in with this group at the moment. Now remember, this is the group that is chasing Kogan. Kogan currently sitting at eight seconds. Then it's a group of six chasers by the look of it at the moment. But Kogan's pushing on now. He's at... Uh, Really is it's something about eight or watts per kilo is Kogan, but uh, Scott's got the pressure on again. Look at Scott go, he really is working hard here. And uh, Scott up at 450, 460 watts at 9.2 watts per kilo. Is he going to be able to distance the group behind? He's not, he's towing them up at the moment. Phil Pierce again leading the charge behind. Everybody wants to be on there. Wait, Roberts is there. Locke is there. Locke's going a great ride again. Stuart McInnes after hovering round the back for so long. Right up here in this second group on the road at the moment. But the gap is stretching. Scott's now got a second gap as he goes up. And Kogan is coming back here. Kogan is being pulled into nothing. Scott's seen him. That's Kogan in the blue. And Scott's done it. Is it Scott? Scott's come behind him. Great Scott. He's almost made it. There we go. He has got in touch. What a ride by Scott. He's pulled back Kogan, who after that fearsome kick initially has been caught. And look at this. Scott just blasts past him. And uh, Kogan's got to respond to this. He can't let that gap go. But it looks like he might not have an answer to Scott, who really has accelerated away now. Kogan is recovering. He's sitting at 5-3. Wish I could recover at 5.3 watts per kilo. But we know Kogan can kick on at uh, 10, 12 or watts per kilo if he needs to. It's not happening at the moment. And now can Scott leave Kogan behind Scott Kogan? He's on his own. Nobody's helping him at the moment because nobody is near him. The uh, chasing group is behind and Scott's pushing on it. 8.1 watts per kilo. 195 beats per minute. Scott has got uh, a gap now. It's a six seconds to Kogan. We drop back to two and Dan Kogan here. We're going to jump up with the uh, camera. We're going to flip up above and you can see Wait Roberts has gone up and he's going past. Is he going to give him a hand? Is he just going to ride off? Well, I think Kogan is just about able to respond here. He's matching the watts per kilo here. So Wait Roberts is currently in second position. Dan Kogan jumping onto the wheels. Meanwhile, Stro McInnes is leading the group behind. If we take a little bit of a look back, that is the chase that's on behind. Stro McInnes is with Russ Downing. Gelsorp's in there. Phil Pierce just about hanging on to that group. Second and third place is Kogan and Wait Roberts. But 10, 10 seconds up the road, it is Scott. But Scott, has he blown his socks off? Well, I think he has. He was down at two watts per kilo. I think... He's not just gone pop, he's exploded uh, completely here. Was that just a speculative attack to see how good his legs were on his way up the uh, volcano here? But you can see he's pushing up. He's got this and nailed, I think, as he comes up. Scott has got it. He's not gone pop. He's uh, taking it steady. So it's Scott who takes the victory behind. It is going to be Stuart McInnes who's going to get across the line. There in second place, then it's going to be Phil Pierce who comes through behind him. Russ Downing comes across in fourth place. Then it's Gelsop now. Lock on his way up to the top. 
Very, very quick ascent there. Scott taking the victory and taking the Volcano jersey on the way through. And Wait Roberts in that last little attack. He went for it. He's been distanced. And you can just see those legs have gone pop. Dolby's going to come in in front of him. He's going to come through just in front of Oxenham if he's not pipped in and over the line. Meanwhile, Hall is coming up. He's going to go over the top of there. He's our next rider in. Wait Roberts going in. Then it's going to be Bowering. Bowery's going to come through just in front of Kenning. Then it's going to be Ryan Williams. Williams got Atkinson with him for company at the moment. And you can see these riders. You see how steep it is on the way up to the line here. All smashed apart. That initial attack by Kogan. Then Scott going. They came clear. Now Gibbons is going to make his way up to the line. He's got Risden behind him. Then it's going to be uh, Mr. Dainty absolutely storming. Ryan, you can see they're coming through thick and fast now. Pritchard's going to come up towards the line. I think AD Dench is going through. Dench goes through. And then it's going to be Dainty. Russ, uh, well and truly clear up over the uh, top. We've got to jump back a little bit here. And uh, just going to try and work our way through, I think, uh, to get our riders in order. Our, uh, I'm just uh, struggling with the fact that everybody's overlaid on each other in terms of uh, distance because they're all sat above each other out on the course and uh, that's what makes it a little bit more tricky as we go up and uh, through because you can see it really is uh, spitting these uh, riders out in uh, ones and twos we're going to drop them back across to uh, see where mr uh, red beacon is so that's going to be martin dainty Sorry, Mr. Bob, Martin Bob, not Mr. Dainty. So a busy old climb there with Scott taking it. And he thought he'd uh, blown his uh, socks off as he got to the top. He hadn't blown his socks off. What he'd done, he's timed it to perfection. So here we go. Martin Bolt on to the climb now. So let's work our way up from the back of the group to the front. Got Mr. Bolt. He is our last rider on the road. 51 seconds in front of Martin. Looks sort of like Mike Killingsworth and uh, Carl Johnson are together. And these are our penultimate uh, duo on the road. They are currently 49 seconds in front of Martin Bolt. They're 1 minute 26 down on a solo Amy Morton. Amy nicely up on to the climb and working hard, but not in with the next group. She's got a sole rider in front, currently sitting at 40 seconds, and that's going to be Edwards of Sheffrek, who's into the tunnels. He comes through, uh, currently pushing 160 watts, and it's going to be Chris from the Alliance MTB. You think he's got a little bit of company here. Now, Dickinson, Kipling, and uh, Chris all together, the uh, threesome together here. As they come through, Chris uh, just at the back of the group, Kipling in the second place, Dickinson just leading them up there. In front of them, you've got Trevor Cree, and Cree uh, sitting uh, currently some 55 seconds in front, just chasing uh, Flanders of uh, Man, that is uh, Andy Fraser. So Trevor Cree on his way up, he's chasing uh, Fraser, who is up on uh, to the uh, bridge. In front of Fraser, seven seconds in front, so he's equidistant to uh, Fulton, I think, and to uh, Crehan. It is going to be Mr. Fulton who we are watching. He's on his way. He's chasing Borelli here. So Stefano Borelli, the young man in charge of Nonas, the man with the uh, by far and away the uh, best pasta I have eaten in months, maybe even years, I have to say. Uh, just on his way up now he is chasing Ali Akers so Stefano from Anonas on his way up chasing this group of three that is Ali Akers he's going to be stunning land in that group as well uh, so Rodney Ali at the moment just on the front there getting out 5 55 watts per kilo 53 revs per minute blimey that is uh, a definite out of the saddle effort and it's a long way to go out of the saddle but looks to be effective for Akers because her and uh, Rodney just uh, dropping Mr. Stanningland here. And Stanningland uh, working hard to stay on the wheels. It looks uh, like Ali just uh, kicking in with the feather. I think you need to drop those gears. Ali down at 47 revs at the moment. It looks like Rodney pushing on at the moment. But again, 
That forty rounds from Rod, it shows you how steep this is in front. Singleton and Donahue and Andy Akers are on the way up and uh, through. Doing a great ride. Kooslugs and uh, Joel Hurts are going through with Mr Thwaites just in front. So plenty of our riders are still on the way up this fantastic climb of the volcano and uh, nearing the 41k mark. But Mr Fraser's just on his way through. Uh, so we uh, see Stanley Land and Acres go through. Mr Borelli now on his way towards the line. You see how high it is. We're up in the clouds here on the volcano in uh, Watopia as he goes up and uh, through the top. The riders go round in a big circle around the very top of the volcano before dropping back down. You can see it spiraling away below our riders. Behind then it's going to be uh, Andy Fraser on his way. He's just going to come in front of uh, Fulton, I think, on his way towards the line. So it is going to be Dave Fulton chasing him all the way to the line as he goes over the top. And the uh, Fraser goes through. Then it's Dave uh, Fulton who's going to go through. Followed then uh, is going to be uh, Trevor Crean who's uh, going to come up next in front of Barry Kipling and Paul Dickinson. So you see just how steep this is. The view's out to sea from the uh, volcano. Last big kick here. You can see that uh, top of the climb, the gantry, the timing point for the uh, top of the KOM. Six minutes, one second. Is Scott's time. Stuart McInnes in second, 6.06. And uh, Downing with a 6.08.3. Phil Pierce with a 6.08.6. Now then it's going to be Lock followed uh, by Oxenham Hall as they come uh, through nicely inside the top 10. The fastest a woman's time was from Jess Evans. We did say she was uh, likely to be our fastest women's rider. Female rider up there at 8.05 from Jess Evans. Ali Akers doing an 8.52. And uh, I think uh, from Jess, it's then uh, Ali Akers, the second of our women up and across the line. And then it is uh, going to be Trevor Cree, who's just gone through, just taking a little bit of a look back. I think uh, Dickinson and uh, Kipling now up over the top, which means that Chris is through from the Alliance MTB as well. We're just uh, dropping back. I think uh, our riders left on the uh, slopes are going to be Amy Morton. Amy just on the way up the uh, wooden uh, boardwalk. And I think our man from uh, Chefrec on his way up or two towards the top there. So we're going to keep our eye on uh, Richard Edwards. He's uh, just making his way up towards the top of the climb. So fantastic riding on the way up here. I think Amy's going to take the third of our women riders coming up and over the line. Just uh, checking to see where uh, Jess O'Brien was as she came through. So many riders coming through some very, very fast times indeed. Uh, great to see all these riders riding well on uh, an unusual course for us to use on the Doddy Chain Gang. You just see runs heading back down in the opposite direction. This steep climb here, 10% climb, really tough stuff as Dickinson goes back in the opposite direction. Edwards now approaching the top, so uh, Richard Edwards working his way up not too far off the very top of the climb here. You can see in the distance below him how much height he's climbed as he goes in and uh, through the line. So the Sheffrick man comes through as uh, Amy Moore's our next rider on her way up and towards the top. So we've got Morn, Johnson, Killingsworth and uh, Bolt. Our four riders remain out on a course as Amy now pushes her way up to the top 173 beats per minute. As uh, Amy, another of our regular riders out on the chain gang, makes her way up these slopes. Definitely a different course for us here using the volcano climb. Definitely interesting to see. Definitely very different from what we're going to see on Thursday because of course on Thursday don't forget we're going to be heading back across and uh, heading to London and back for Greater London Flat. Don't forget all of the links on the Facebook page on the uh, Donny Chain Gang Facebook page. Don't forget support the people who support your sport the guys who are making this happen. The sponsors who look after Russ and other guys at Danny Scything to Grand Tour Coffee, Halo Wheels, Pinarello Bikes, Noahu, of course, OTE, as well as HT Hostels and the New York at Cycling. Don't forget, of course, the guys from Danny Cycling to Russ and Dad to Dean. Now the guys who, with myself, Matt Payne at Full Speed Events, have uh, got the chain gang together. And uh, we're looking forward to bringing you uh, plenty of great action on our way through. 
as uh, Amy Moore comes in to cross the line behind. I think Killingsworth and Johnson are going to be our duo on the way up towards the climb next. We've been bringing you the coverage all the way through. We've been bringing you the ride all the way through. Plenty of group rides, plenty of groups forming, plenty of riders making lots of friendships that I think are going to last a lot longer than uh, COVID-19 and lockdown will do, that is for sure. And great to see so many people enjoying themselves on the chain gang. We're back in London, don't forget, it's going to be a whole different beast. A very, very fast flat, but with lots of groups riding the way in to the finish. So make sure that you get that link click, make sure you join, tell your friends if you're not out on the bike in the real world, then make sure you're on the chain gang on Thursday. And don't forget to give us a subscribe, give us a share on YouTube as well as on Facebook. So Mike Killingsworth and Carl Johnson on their way up towards the top. The two riders have stayed together this long. We're on that 10% slope now. Is this where they're going to get separated out? They're nearly up at the top. You can see just how tough this climb is as our riders made their way up. I think they're not too far from the very top here as they just come up and through. You can see the tunnels, the beaches, the climbs, the hills of old Watopia in the distance, the uh, artificial world uh, playing host to the chain gang as uh, Carl Johnson goes just in front of Mike Killingsworth, which leaves us our ever faithful red sweeper beacon martin bolt making his way up the climb so another fantastic day on check out fantastic to have you watching thank you very much for watching make sure you tell your friends make sure you support the people keep on riding on swift those boys are the guys that give us all the great pictures the interaction all of the chain gang is brought to you because we can do this on swift we couldn't give you this kind of coverage on any other platform so a massive thank you to the guys at swift don't forget you can see me out on the road in real life as well as out on uh, the Zwift world as well. Matt Fix of Pain. Don't forget, of course, you can get in touch with Matt at Full Speed Events. And of course, you can get in touch with Russ at Downing Cycling. Make sure you stay in touch. If you're out and riding, it, make sure you keep it rubber side down. In the meantime, get some recovery done. Enjoy yourselves. I will see you again on Thursday for the next Donnie Chain Gang.